Hi everyone, this is the last part of a three-part series on how to make a PCB with KiCad. And today what we're going to do is really the, the culmination of everything we worked towards. So in the first uh, part, what we did is we created a schematic uh, using uh, a schema out of KiCad. Then we took each one of those schematic components and we assigned a footprint, a physical layout, physical footprint to, uh, to each one of those schematic components. And now what we're going to do is we're going to take all of those footprints and we're going to arrange them on the PCB uh, in the way that uh, we, we need in order to send it off to the manufacturer. So uh, if you've got KiCad already open up and you will go to uh, the schematic capture uh, software once again is schema and we'll start from there. As you see, uh, once again, there's our schematic that we've been working with the whole time. And uh, the last video, we went to CVPCB and assigned footprints to it. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go to the next button here, the Run PCB New. It says Run it to Layout a Printed Circuit Board. So that's what we want. So I'm going to click it. It gives me a bit of an error message there, but that's not a problem. It's just saying that the, the file doesn't exist. So that's all right. So what we want to do is we want to get all those footprints onto this uh, brand new screen. The way you're going to do that is to come up here with, with this little wrench button. It says .NET. It says read a net list. Uh, we're going to click that and uh, KiCad probably has already populated the net list file down here for you. All you need to do is click the read current net list button. Okay. Once you do that and hit close, uh, you can see right up here in the upper left hand corner something changed. There looks to be a stack of components. If you wheel in with your mouse, you'll see that <laughs> KiCad has taken all of our components and stacked them on top of each other and put it up in the up, upper uh, left hand corner. This is just kind of a, a thing that happens uh, with KiCad anytime you export modules over. Uh, but we're going to take care of this. So I'm going to zoom back out and I'm going to zoom in on a kind of empty uh, part of the grid. And what we want to do is come up here to this button that says Mode Footprint. It says Manual and Automatic Move and Replace Modules. Click that. Uh, then you're going to right click on the screen and here it says globe move in place and wherever you right clicked on the screen uh, it's going to uh, execute this command which is move all modules so click that it asks if I want to do that I put yes and then it's going to take all of the components it's going to stack them here on the grid and it's going to kind of separate them out so I can see them so I've still got this button activated. I want to do that for now because what I'm going to do now is move these components around. And what you'll see is as I move a component, you'll see that there are little wire traces that follow it around. And what this is showing me is that, hey, this component actually at some point when we make uh, copper traces needs to attach to uh, this other uh, copper pad in some way. Right? And so it's just showing me kind of a, an ad hoc connection here. So it's really going to help me out when I start to adjust everything and put it where it needs to go. So uh, you know, I can place it out here. I can take uh, this, my battery terminal, which is BT1. I can place this wherever I want to. Um, I can also uh, uh, rotate it. Now the way I'm moving it around, uh, once again, it's just like with the schema program. You press M and you're able to move the component around or if you need to rotate something you can press R and it'll rotate it for you so M and R uh, two keys that you uh, really wanna uh, keep handy now what I'm gonna do is just take some time and I'm gonna arrange this thing uh, to make it look how I want it to look on the circuit board there's a few things I wanna do a few ways I wanna make this uh, look and so I'm gonna take some time and move these around so do that for yourself uh, take some time, you know, pause the video if you need to, and uh, move some of these components around so that it makes sense to you. Okay, great. Now, once you have your components uh, in a position where uh, you want them, the next thing you might want to do is consider moving the labeling around. Uh, that way you can kind of get everything uh, in a place where you might want it. So. Uh, I'm going to come up here to this button, the, the mode footprint button, where we just move the components around. I'm going to turn this off. And now what it kind of does is unlocks everything so I can move things around. For instance, this P, where it's uh, P1, which is marking the LM386. I don't want that label to be up there. I'd rather have the label be somewhere else on the board. So I can hit M on the P1 label and move it to wherever I want. Same thing with the LM386 label. Uh, the potentiometer is the same way. 
uh, we can really just kind of move this around uh, wherever we want to see it. So I'm going to take some time now and just kind of move these around, put it somewhere else uh, so that I have some space on the board where I want it. All right, and that's it with the labels. The next thing you want to do is you want to create edges for the board. Uh, the way you do this is come over here to the side and it's been showing me what layer I've been working on. Right now it, it has uh, the back copper layer selected, um, but what I want to do is I want to select the edge cuts layer. All right, so this is gonna uh, be kind of the, um, it's pretty much telling the program that I want to be able to uh, define the edges of the circuit board now. So I select edge cuts. I then select the add a graphic line of our polygon, but what it's really going to do is since I selected edge cuts, is it's going to define where the edge of the board is. Chances are the grid that you're working with is grid uh, uh, 50, uh, which is quite a bit bigger. Um, so I'm going to leave mine at 25, um, but now I'm going to define the edge of my board. So all I need to do is click once, drag uh, and uh, the edge down and it's going to stay locked to the grid so you're, you're, you're okay to kind of just uh, move quickly. Uh, click where my edge is going to be, move it over here, click there, move it up, click here and then back to the start and double click when you want it to end. And there we go. I've defined the edges of the PCB. The next step I want to do is I want to put the copper traces on the board. So I'm going to go up to the uh, mouse button here and there are two ways you could do this. I could manually draw each trace and the way I would do that I would come over here and first I want to pick which layer I want to work with. Do I want the traces on the front of the uh, copper PCB or on the back of the PCB? If I click front I then can come down to green trace button here. It says add tracks and vias and click that and what I want to do is just follow these little white lines. So if I want to draw a trace from uh, the audio in to uh, pin one of the potentiometer, click, drag it over, double click, and now I've created a trace between those two points. So I could do it that way, and that's a perfectly legitimate way to do it, to go through and uh, build all the traces yourself, but I'm going to show you a quicker way. I'm going to undo that, and now what I'm going to do is go back to the mouse, and I'm going to click this button that says Mode Track Auto Routing. So I've got this uh, uh, button activated. I'm going to right click on the screen, go to Auto Route, and then Auto Route All Modules. And just like that, KiCad will take and route everything for you. Now the auto router for KiCad uh, is generally pretty good as long as you have a few components. If it gets very complicated, you may find yourself uh, running the routes yourself. Um, or you might have to go and find another router. You can export this file, get another router, and have them do all the complicated traces for you. But uh, in this case, it works pretty well. Down at the bottom, some information you might want to note. Uh, KiCad tells us, hey, there's 27 pads down here, um, that we've got 24 nodes, uh, a lot of other information. But the main thing you want to look at is where it says unconnected. If you did the auto routing process and there is something that's unconnected, you need to go up here and find where those pads are and figure out why the auto router couldn't get there. Perhaps you've got a setup um, that uh, just will not accommodate the auto router. Uh, maybe you'll have to do it by hand. Maybe you have to do some things by hand and let it auto route the rest. Um, but just pay attention to this because you want everything connected up before you uh, go to this uh, next step. So before we go on to kind of the final part where we uh, uh, put the files together, there is one more thing I want to show you that's not a must do, uh, but for the manufacturer that I use, they kind of require you to do this. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to label the back of the PCB with something on the back silk screen. Uh, and so this is really just something cool if you just like cool art or you just want to label it, you know, something neat. Uh, the way you do that is uh, you would uh, select front or back silk screen and uh, your front silk screen right now is being defined by all of these parts. You know, this is actually going to get printed onto the circuit board. But I'm going to uh, write something on the back silk screen uh, just so that there's something back there. Like I said, the manufacturer I use likes to have something on the back silk screen just uh, so when they print it up, they, they have something there. So what I'm going to do is come over to the side and I'm going to write some text there. So I'm going to hit the text button. I'm going to click and it asks me what text I want. So I'm going to put... Uh, skinny R and D hit OK 
I can move this around and you'll notice that it's uh, actually flipped that's because it's representing that this is going to be printed on the back I'm going to put it right in the middle of the board click it and so uh, now I have a, uh, a, a little logo or something on the back of the board and you can write whatever you want uh, sometimes you can import different pictures and things so uh, you can play around with that uh, however you would like so uh, the last thing that we need to do is we need to take and export this to a set of files so that you can send those files to a manufacturer and the way you do that is come up to file go to plot and you're gonna find that not everything that is on your screen uh, has been uh, checked as they are on mine. Uh, what you want checked is the front copper layer, the back copper layer, the front silk screen, the back silk screen, the front mask, the back mask, and the edge cuts. So make sure all of those are checked uh, and then hit plot and it'll generate those files. Click generate drill file and then uh, come over to the side and just click drill file and it'll place that in that same working directory. I'm gonna hit close and then we're going to go to that directory and you will see uh, all of these files there and what we want to do is most manufacturers want you to put it in a zip file so I'm going to select the uh, DRL file and then every one of these files that have a G as the extension so uh, GBL, GBS, GBO, GBR, GTL, GTS, and GTO and then we're going to send that to a compressed zip file and I'm just going to name it AMP Project 01. Now, uh, as far as manufacturers go, the manufacturer I like to use is uh, OSH Park. Um, if you are wondering kind of what files they accept, all that kind of stuff, they have the design rules printed so you know what kind of files to send them. I'll show you how this works. Uh, what you want to do is go to Get Started Now, go to Select a File. You want to find uh, your file in the directory. So I'm going to come down to my Projects folder and the AMP Project select my zip file, open it, and then it's going to start processing the file. In the meantime, I can put in a project name, so LM386. Um, once it's finished uh, looking at the file, uh, what it's going to do is tell you if there are any problems uh, with the files that you gave it, and so that'll just take a couple of minutes. Okay, and it's finished. Uh, we have the um, board over here. Uh, the prices are pretty cheap. Like it says up here, it's going to be $3.50 uh, for three which is fantastic so um, I did notice one thing here on the bottom uh, layer that uh, I put skinny R&D right over the top of some of the copper which means it's probably just not gonna print uh, completely like it should so you might want to put any sort of logo or anything you have in a clear area um, but uh, other than that that's that's it so that's the end of the three-part series uh, if you have any questions or comments, uh, please let me know in the comments section or just uh, get, a, get a hold of me. If you have any other suggestions of tutorials, things you'd like to see, uh, please uh, let me know. All right, thanks for watching.